When we stand on a bathroom scale, we learn, for better or worse, our weight. In more precise terms, the scale quantifies our mass. All matter in the visible universe has mass. It's what governs the movement of planets, stars, and galaxies through the force of gravity. And all matter everywhere is structured in the same way. The standard model of physics, developed more than 50 years ago, explains this structure in terms of quarks, gluons, and their interactions. These particles, interacting together, make up protons and neutrons, which along with electrons, in turn, make up more familiar atoms. But this creates a question. The mass of quarks inside a proton is much less than that of the proton itself. And gluons have no mass at all. How is this possible? In order to find some answers, we have to dive into the world inside the proton. But this presents a challenge. Protons are made up of chaotic bundles of quarks and gluons, moving at near light speed, interacting and annihilating each other. It has always seemed nearly impossible to create an accurate picture of this world. But a new collaborative project is visualizing the fundamental structure of the proton based on original research and sophisticated animation. Visualization has been a powerful tool for science for the last three decades. The Hubble Space Telescope has produced stunning images that have transformed how people everywhere view the universe. Now, a startling new view of the subatomic world is also within reach. Physicists from MIT and Jefferson Lab are working with a group of animators and documentary filmmakers to both create a more accurate visualization of the structure of the proton and to document the collaboration between science and the arts that drives this work. The goal is to provide a more complete view of subatomic structures that has the potential to change how people think about the nature of matter itself. I've created the three quarks as points of light, mm -hmm. um, and I've given them each a chromodynamic color, and yep. I've, I've set it up so they trade colors between each other the whole time. Yeah. Uh, they're also moving in a way where they're jumping yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. No, I think this was uh, very, very good, the way you did that. Yeah. Visualization has long been used to help explain and understand the subatomic world. And these pictures have become more sophisticated as our understanding has improved. The ancient Greeks believed that matter could be split in more and more parts, until in the end, what was left were the smallest indivisible constituents, or atoms, from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible. At the end of the 19th century, Scientists learned that matter can be deconstructed into molecules, comprised of atoms. However, the choice of the word atom was premature. In the 20th century, we learned atoms can be deconstructed into electrons and their nuclei, comprised of protons and neutrons. And eventually, that every proton or neutron contains three primary quarks that define their separate identities. Often, constituent parts of all matter are portrayed as being shaped like round billiard balls, or in the case of quarks, as balls within the larger ball of a proton. We add squiggly lines, arrows, and other shapes to denote the forces at work at the quantum scale. While these diagrams can help explain what's going on, they in no way represent the reality of what this quantum world is actually like. The reference image that is in your slide deck is you know, I look at that and I have no idea what's going on in there. I see little, you know, balls with up arrows and down arrows and squiggly lines. In the proton, the quarks are held together by a force where gluons are exchanged, and with such a strength that the quarks and gluons cannot be isolated. The quarks and gluons carry a new quantum property known as color. The theory used to describe this force is known as quantum chromodynamics, or QCD the quantum theory of color. There are three types of quantum color, called red, blue, and green, in analogy to the primary colors of visible light. All observable systems of quarks and gluons and their associated antiparticles found in nature are predicted in QCD to have equal amounts of red, 
blue and green color. That is, they are colored white in analogy to visible light. Quarks do not actually have these colors, but just as white light can be divided into different colors, so can quark systems be divided into equal amounts of red, green, and blue. When we enter the quantum world, particles that are confined to small volumes move at near light speed. Everything is in continual motion. Gluons transform their energy into pairs of virtual matter and antimatter that are continuously created and destroyed, creating a quark C, their existence exerted on other particles as a pressure. In this strange quantum world, conservation of energy can be temporarily broken, and even massive matter-antimatter pairs can live short times. Yet order also rules. Each elementary particle has a quantum property known as spin, which behaves like an intrinsic angular momentum. Nature's rules for spin provide order to the visible universe and is the reason for the periodic table of the elements and the shell structure of nuclei. To learn about the underlying structure of matter, scientists often rely on microscopes. In a microscope, light scatters from the object of interest. The scattered light is focused, detected in the eye of the viewer, and processed in her brain. The process is non-destructive in that the leaf or insect is not affected. With our eyes, we can readily discern structures of very large scales in the cosmos to human-sized scales of a meter, down to scales of 10 microns, as for example, a layer of the familiar kitchen aluminum foil. The ratio of such aluminum foil to a meter is down by a factor of 100,000. Scaling down with another factor of 100,000 gives the size of an atom, which we can see with powerful electron microscopes. One needs to scale down with yet another factor of 100,000 to come to the size of a proton, less than one femtometer, or 10 to the minus 15th meters. To see inside matter at this tiny scale, we use electron accelerators as microscopes. HERA was a particle accelerator located at DAISY in Hamburg, Germany, operating from 1992 to 2007. HERA was the world's first and up to now only collider facility of electron and proton beams and discovered that gluons dominate deep inside a proton. Jefferson Lab, located in Newport News, Virginia, uses intense and polarized electron beams to impinge on fixed targets of protons and heavier nuclei to make precise maps of matter in a region where a few quarks dominate. A major new accelerator, the Electron Ion Collider, or EIC, is being developed in the U.S. to be located at Brookhaven National Lab in Long Island, New York, and it is anticipated to start operations in the 2030s. EIC will provide precise maps to bridge the regions where a few quarks dominate the structure of protons and nuclei to where gluons dominate. The goal is to provide us with an understanding of the internal structure of the proton and more complex atomic nuclei that is comparable to our knowledge of the electron structure of atoms, which lies at the heart of modern technologies. What if there were no gluons and quark-gluon interactions? Your mass and the mass of the visible world would drop by about an order of magnitude. The MRI technique is based on using a high magnetic field to reverse the spins of the protons in the body. Without gluons and quark-gluon interactions, the signal strength would drop to 20% of its value. Indeed, without gluons, there would be no nucleons, no atomic nuclei, no visible world. Is it science fiction to believe understanding this miraculous quark-gluon structure of nuclei can lead to 21st century applications? No, as even if the internal structure of protons and more complex atomic nuclei reside in a quantum world with light speeds, with ever-changing numbers or particles, and with strong interactions, ultimate knowledge of this world will lead to the future of modern industry and medical applications. An example is given by modern computing that relies on our knowledge and ability to manipulate the quantum world. 
How do we learn about this strange world with electron accelerators? Like conventional cameras, how our accelerator sees its subject is governed by two adjustable parameters, resolution, or pixel size, and shutter speed. The resolution is correlated with the energy of the device. To probe substructures of the proton with its one femtometer size, the electron must be moving very near light speed. The negatively charged electron interacts with the fractionally charged quarks inside the proton by exchanging a photon, the quantum of electricity and magnetism. This photon exchange can keep the proton intact, but more commonly smashes it in pieces. Google Earth, in zooming from the Earth's radius to the MIT dome, increases the spatial resolution by about a factor of 100,000, the same factor we saw earlier that successively brings us from a human height to the thickness of household aluminum foil, then to the size of an atom, and finally to the radius of a proton. The shutter of a camera is a door that opens for a definite time to allow selected light to reach the medium. This time can, for our accelerator, also be determined from the electron and the proton and can be equated with the value of Bjorken x. x can be interpreted as the fraction of momentum of the proton that is carried by the struck quark. Mostly based on a large data set from the only previous electron-proton collider, we have accumulated snapshots of the charged structure of the proton taken in a special boosted reference frame, where 1 over x represents the shutter speed and 1 over q the spatial resolution. QCD prescribes an evolution with q squared, which connects quarks and gluons. The animation shows the quark and gluon momentum distributions derived from these data. Note that the gluon, g, and c quark, s, distributions are reduced by a factor of 20 in these graphs. In a regular microscope, we use light to scatter from objects to magnify such that we can see them with our eyes. This light does not disturb the object as we see it as is. This is not true for our high-energy electron scattering microscope. As an artifact of the special reference frame used for interpretation of the scattering experiments smashing the proton apart, we have gathered knowledge about the one-dimensional momentum fractions of quarks and gluons inside them. We have also gathered knowledge about the transverse spatial size of the composite proton from elastic scattering where the proton stays intact. This is important knowledge, but limited. Due to these limitations, it has been difficult to portray the inner structure and dynamics of the proton. But what do the data tell us? For the first time, we have constructed animations to illustrate the proton structure as a variation with x and as a variation with q squared. If one views deep inside the proton with fast shutter speeds or at small values of Bjork and x, its structure is dominated by gluons. Gluons split in more gluons, and two gluons can recombine into one, causing much activity or dynamics. Viewed with more modest shutter speeds, the process where a gluon creates two quarks, one quark and one antiquark, can be seen. Such a fluctuation is the root of what is termed a quark C, and is, for example, responsible for details of the inner charge distribution of the charge neutral neutron. Viewed at slow shutter speeds or at large Bjork and X, the proton structure gets dominated by three effective blobs which carry the valence quark identity of the proton as being two up quarks and one down quark, confined together in a single proton by the exchange of gluons. What do we see when we peer inside the proton while increasing the spatial resolution q squared of our camera? The answer depends on at which shutter speed x we are looking. At small values of x, we see more detail appear with increasing q squared. But we also see more and more gluons appear due to the specifics of QCD. The observer will have to distill this information from what appears a squashed, pancake-like proton due to the relativistic effect called Lorentz contraction. At medium x, we see again the details increase, 
and both the density of the gluons and quark C increase with Q squared, the gluons faster. At high x, we see a coarse structure reflecting two up and one down quarks, a structure that becomes more evident at higher Q squared, with also more gluons and quark C appearing with Q squared as driven by QCD. But again, the squashing of the spherical proton into the pancake-like objects complicates the ability of the observer to extract the proton structure and underlying quark-gluon interactions. By varying the pixel size and the shutter speed of our electron accelerator camera, we have gathered information about the proton structure over the last five decades since the discovery of quarks and QCD. We learned about the transverse spatial size of the composite proton and the one-dimensional momentum fractions of quarks and gluons inside them. However, large gaps of understanding remain. For now, we have used our imagination to fill this gap and animate what the data tell us about the three-dimensional structure of the matter deep inside us. But much better, QCD theory developments over the last two decades now provide the foundation to extract these three-dimensional pictures of the structure from select designer electron quark scattering processes. To accomplish this, we need a microscope with sufficient intensity to capture these designer processes and image the structures at the finest quark-gluon levels, to charter the rapidly moving gluon oceans, quark seas, and primary quark continents. The residue of the quark-gluon interactions in individual protons and neutrons leaks out and creates sufficient nuclear binding to pack protons and neutrons tightly together in tiny atomic nuclei. These act well beyond a mere collection of protons and neutrons and are much more dynamic, harboring mysteries as telltales of the underlying quark-gluon world. And vice versa, the behavior of quarks and gluons is expected to be entangled with the structure of the nucleus they reside in. Massive computer simulations indicate exotic gluons may be exchanged between individual protons and neutrons. The nucleus can also act as an amplifier and packs so many gluons together that no more fit, leading to saturation of the interactions. For the first time, we have developed a new animation-based framework in which to communicate, understand, and explore the fundamental structure of matter for the curious mind. These first-generation animations are based on current understanding and available data and seek to capture essential aspects of the strange and beautiful quantum world of the microcosm. But many mysteries remain in how the visible matter in the universe is constructed from elementary constituents. We now are working on a 3D visualization of these animations, and then we'll continue our journey to animate the nucleus.